Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Please let me know. I want to make sure my mic is up. I know there's always a little delay with the chat, so just let me know if you can hear me. Hello, everyone. I love seeing you all here. Awesome. How is everyone this Monday? Oh, good. Tina, thank you. Loud and clear. That is what we like to hear. Um, hello. Welcome to my first Monday evening live. This is for everyone who was requesting that I would do an evening live because it's kind of hard to uh, make maybe the morning ones. So we're going to try this out once a month, at least for now, the last um, Friday of the month last Friday, last Monday of the month. Wow. <laughs> the week has just started. And I don't even know. Um, oh, there's feedback. Crud. Oh, I see what it is. How about this? Does it sound better? I appreciate you letting me know. So just let me know if that got rid of the feedback because I think I know what it was. First live. I love seeing all of the first lives there. Okay, let me know again because um, Marcia said there was feedback. So I need to know now if the feedback is gone. Oh, yay, Tina. Thank you. Thank you. Good to know because I don't want that while we start creating the project. So I have um, a most requested project. I know this isn't always for everyone, but we're going to make felt ornaments tonight, Christmas in July. Um, so it's requested a lot that I do more felt ornaments and I thought now's a good time to get started since it is um, you know, still pretty early. We might have time to create some and I love um, using my regular dies to do that. So we are probably going to flip it around because I have no idea how long the stitching is going to take. I know I stitched one this afternoon, um, but of course I'm not trying to answer questions or read comments or any of that. Um, and it takes a little bit just because I like I'm extra maybe. So we are going to do that. Um, Susan, are you here? I just saw you. <laughs> um, so anyway, we are, I'm going to flip my camera. Oh, thank you guys. Hello, hello. I love seeing so many of you here. Um, a couple of things. If this is your first live, I've seen a bunch of you say it's your first one. Awesome. Perfect. If it is your first, let me know in the chat. I love to know that. No, this, um, okay. Nabil says, is this instead of Friday or just an extra? It's an extra just because I love you guys. Um, we're going to see how it goes. I mean, it is kind of a lot of work to set up, but I really have been enjoying this format. So this is an extra. There will still be one on Friday morning. Oh, Rebecca says her local stamp store did a fun Christmas in July class this weekend. Oh, good. Uh, me too. I am... I'm kind of surprised I wasn't in the mood, but when I sat down to make these, I literally have so many ideas now. So we're going to make one style, but I'm going to tell you because, because it's me and because, like I said, I got excited. I have some other options for you if you like them. I probably won't do a live. Um, there's one in particular that I think um, you guys might really love. And so if you love it a lot, let me know and I'll do a regular video just stitching it. Um, it's not going to be a lot different than what we're doing, but it is a different idea. Oh, Tina says it's her first live. Uh, Lisa says looking at her Pink Fresh Studio order history and she <laughs> blames me. Well, at least you're buying some good stuff. <laughs> uh, I always say there's worse things we could spend our money on. Hello, hello, everybody. Oh, good, Jennifer Williams, first time. <laughs> uh, Michelle says she's yay for another live and she's gonna watch Friday while at work, ha <laughs> ha. That's awesome, so many first lives. Um, a couple of things, if you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe, it helps. Um, hit a like, hit the thumbs up, click the little bell 
um, on my channel to be notified so that you do know when we go live or just when I have a new video up. Well, without further ado, as I mentioned, we got lots to do tonight. I'm going to flip this camera around and show you my little ornament. So I actually purchased this uh, plush frosty mitten die. This is a memory box one, I think last year. Now I know it's been out for a while. This has probably been out several years, but I just purchased it last year because I had all these ideas and I did nothing with it. Absolutely nothing. And so it was first on my list to do something with. I will say, um, I forgot something. I'm going to flip back around because I don't like to just use my hands. I have already put a bunch of stuff in the description box. Most of the supplies, I have a few things to add because I got excited this afternoon and did some other things. Um, so I will add some stuff when the live is over for any supplies you see later on. But the majority of the supplies are in the description box. I've also linked to any other felt um, ornament tag that I've done. So that is in the description box as well. I noticed that there's some cute critters like a deer, an owl, mm, oh, and a fox from Simon Says Stamp. That video is like from 2016, maybe. They still have those. And I'm thinking about revamping those and doing another video. So if you guys want to see that, kind of let me know. But I did link to a bunch of felt ornament videos. So that's down there. And I think that's it. If I remember anything else, I'll let you know. But you can already find those links. And I have linked to the product. Okay. So memory box. We're going to use this. And then I am decorating it. I actually bought these last year from Concord and Ninth, the Poinsettia. Um, this is the Fresh Cut Florals Edition 4. I know that Lawn Fawn has an awesome Poinsettia set. Hero Arts does. Waffle Flower just came out with a new one. Lots and lots. My blog post that'll go out tomorrow morning that'll have the replay and everything for my replay crew. Hello, replay crew. Thank you so much. Um, that will have links to anything like just similar product that you might have. I'm using this one. I really liked it because it doesn't have any extra like cuts in it. It just has that little dotted design. And then we're going to flip it over. I customized it with the year. And I did that with our Lawn Fawn Oliver's Stitched 123s. So I want to do the year, but I want to tell you there's Oliver's stitched alphabet. So if you want to do somebody's name or initials or something and customize it that way, that would be cute as well. The stitching just makes it so that you can kind of stitch a little bit easier. Um, just really, really fun. Anna says she would love to see a revamp. Lisa says she has not worked with felt in years. Oh, good. Susan says that she would love to see some more felt cuties. Yes, so, okay, I think we probably will. I it, I go in phases. So doing this was very much, um, kind of inspired me to do more. Now you can always add a little paper tag to this and then like hang it from a package. So it's like a two gift in one. Um, really fun. I don't do super like fancy stitches or anything like that. I added buttons from my stash. I will tell you, I'm not going to have a source for ribbon or buttons. They are old, old, old. Um, Studio Calico, maybe. I think all of those old. I've had them forever. I love them. This ribbon I've probably had for 15 to 17, 18 years, forever. So I just grab stuff from my stash. I love 3D projects because I feel like I get to use some of that stuff. I saw someone, I'm going to scroll back real quick, who said baby's first Christmas. Yes, Tina, I love that idea. I think that that would be awesome. Okay, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. I'm going to make sure there's nothing else and then we're going to get started. I have an assortment of felt here. Um, I don't have any Ellen Hudson felt out, but I do really, really like it. This is the Tailored Expressions felt. I'm going to tell you, if you're going to work make a felt project, I would highly recommend 100% wool felt, something that's not going to tear easily. Um, there is some lag tonight. I will tell you guys, we have some bad weather, and I really hope it doesn't affect this, but 
we're going to try to persevere and get through it. Um, a hundred percent wool felt is definitely going to make this easier. I don't even know why this carrot colors out. I did not use this on anything, but, um, this is just kind of an assortment. Um, this is mostly the colors, not this orange that we're using tonight is kind of this group right here. Um, this is khaki, red hot, marshmallow, heather white, which I love this heather white. I don't know why I just do. And moss. And then this little group here is going to give you a hint at maybe what we're going to see at the end of the video. I am going to move my felt to the side. I did do all my die cutting off camera. A question I get a lot regarding uh, die cutting felt is how to get a good cut. I will tell you, I have the Spellbinders Platinum and it die cuts it beautifully. If you're having some trouble, uh, place a piece of copy paper in as a shim. Are we working camera? It just keeps pausing. Ugh. Maybe not, I hope it's not doing it on your end. Hello, Tracy Boyd says she loves tailored expressions felt and Benzi, yes. Okay. I'm going to show you all of my pieces and I did kind of partially stitch one just in case I start running out of time and we need to save some time. So these are all of our pieces. Let's move that out of the way. For our ornament, we're going to need a front and a back. Hi Dawn! Hello Tina! Yeah, okay, it keeps lagging. I have a bad feeling it's our weather, and I'm so sorry. So we need a front and a back. Those are from the Memory Box Plush Frosty Mitten. Then I did die cut two of these, the little cuff for the mitten. So the base of my mitten is from the Tailored Expressions Heather White. The cuffs are from Tailored Expressions Marshmallow. Then that is it from the plush frosty mitten. I will say they have a cute little stitching snowflake that's fun. And if you don't have buttons, you can die cut buttons in any color you want and add those to your project. So that's really cute as well. I'm gonna set that aside. The flowers. So you get, I'm gonna take it out. Maybe it'll be a little easier to see. This is the poinsettia. And then we've got a couple of greenery pieces. So I die cut, I die cut it twice actually, and you can see it die cuts the three petals in one, but I really like two of the big ones. And then a medium, oh, I'm kind of out of frame, a medium and a small. Oh good, Michelle likes the personalization. I like a personalization. Um, just because I think it, it's fun and it's a fun um, keepsake. I've been making my kids these for a few years and I haven't been adding the years. So I think, well, I don't think I've been adding them on this. So I'm hoping this is a easier way to keep track. The greenery, we're going to use one big one on the front and two small. And then on the back, we're going to just use one big. Um, I actually die cut all of these and then I thought, well, maybe I'll just use the little piece extra on the back and I like that little touch. So those are the Concord and Knight, Ninth Fresh Cut Florals Edition 4. I'm just going to put those away so I don't lose anything. And then we have the Lawn Fawn Oliver's Stitched 123s and we're gonna use the little apostrophe and then the two and the one. Um, you could do the whole 2021 if you wanted to, or like I said, if you have the alphabet and you wanna customize it with initials, that would be super cute too. So those are kind of our pieces and we are gonna start stitching because it does take a little bit of time. So this is gonna be the front. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, I always lay it out so that it's real, because I'm very visual. I know in the past I've done this and it is so irritating. <laughs> I do it like this and I stitch and then you can't put it together. So that's just a little trick that I have learned is if I lay it all out like this, then I don't mess up quite as much. 
So my, I start with the cuff. I am using DMC embroidery floss. I have some in my stash. Well, I actually have a lot. I used to cross stitch. Oh, plaid felt gale would be amazing. And I so wish. You can cut felt with your die cuts. Okay, Lisa Gordon says, so I have loads of cross stitch thread. Will that fit in the holes? Yes. And I'm going to tell you how much I am using. Um, because it's different. So to stitch on anything that doesn't have holes, I'm going to use two strands of floss. And I'll say that again when we get to that. For stitching the actual cuff to the ornament, for sewing on the buttons, and for stitching all the way around, I'm going to use three strands of embroidery floss. This can be any brand of embroidery floss that you like. I just have DMC, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, I actually have some other floss, but it's for different. It's for an actual cross stitch project, so I thought I'd probably better not use that. Um, yes, some of these little holes stick in here. I honestly don't even care that much, and just leave it. Um, I do want to show you kind of the back of this one that I already did. So that's kind of what my back looks like, and I don't really care that it's super messy. In fact, I had a knot here, and I just decided I didn't care. I was running out of time. Um, because we're going to sandwich it and stuff it with polyester fiber fill, and you'll never know. So don't worry. Don't get hung up on making it look super great. I'm going to sew the cuff on. I'm not going to start in this outer one. I'm going to start in the one next to it. You could start over here as well. I don't know why I start here, but that's what I've been doing. I really, I'm going to move this close so you can see it as I'm stitching. I wish that lag would go away. I am going to stitch it to the mitten like that. And the reason I'm not doing that outer one is because we'll really hit that when we stitch the two halves together. All right, let me see if I'm missing anything before. How hard is orbit stitch through felt if I doesn't have holes? You have the, the Tim Holtz Biggs dye poinsettia. Um, I am not sure what orbit stitch is unless embroidery floss, no lag there. Oh, well, that's good. Maybe it's just on my end. Lisa says, why does it snatch the message out of the chat? What message? Hmm. I am not sure. And I will have to check on that when the live stream is over. I'm going to go in a hole and then I'm just going to go along these scallops. So that was kind of my um, plan for this. You can just straight stitch it across or do whatever you want. These holes are pretty big, so they're pretty easy to stitch because you kind of have a guideline. I'm using three strands of embroidery floss because it gives a little bit more presence and really shows up nice because I want that stitching detail. And I just come up through each of these and then go down right at the scallop. If I miss any questions, you guys, I will try to, um, oh, someone deleted their message. Thank you. I wasn't sure. I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat, but I, I know I'm missing things. I generally have to go back and see if there's anything really pressing that I missed. Cindy wants to know why I have a Band-Aid, and it's because I um, have a hangnail, actually. And it makes my, my thumb looks terrible. So I didn't want to uh, have that on camera tonight. I shouldn't have pulled it. Um, but I did pull my thumb, my hangnail and it bled. So, oh, it was a spell. Is, is it hard to stitch through felt without pre-made holes in dyes? No, um, I actually find it is not hard to stitch through it make sure you're using a really sharp needle. I am using super uh, sharp needles and the smaller the needle, the better. I am using um, Bowen 26, 
and 28, either one. I'm gonna show you, I these are kind of pricey actually, but I use them for cross stitch. This is what I use. Um, this is the 28. I'm actually using the 26 right now though. They're a little hard to thread, I'm not gonna lie. The eye of them is pretty small. In fact, when I have to re-thread on camera, you guys are gonna laugh because it might take me a minute, um, but I really love it. Now, before I move on, I've stitched all the way across. I'm gonna grab my buttons that I want to put up here, and they're gonna be random on all of these because I did not have enough to make all of them exactly the same. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch these on. It's so much, I have a whole drawer full of buttons. Um, a lot of, I think that line was called Color Theory from Studio Calico years ago. I loved those buttons. And Doodlebug. I have a lot of Doodlebug buttons. Do you guys have a lot of buttons? Oh, Cindy touched a cactus and has a Band-Aid. Yeah. Um, I really was mad at myself when I pulled that hangnail last night and it's just because I knew better. I knew I should have just clipped it and not pulled, but you know, it's kind of like when you have a pimple on your face and you know you're not supposed to <laughs> squeeze it. <laughs> and you do. That's not smart either. A threat. Okay, I'm missing. Oh, somebody says they used to have a ton of PTI. Oh, me too, Susan, me too. And I got rid of them. That was dumb. Tracy says she has a threader thing. Yes, because <laughs> eyes. I need to get one. I can't find my um, threader anywhere. I don't know what I did with it. Susan, you're going to love the ornament that I share later. We may have to make them in September when I see you. Oh, Kathy had a bunch of paper tray ink ones too. I love finding use for them. I did not keep a ton of embellishments. Like I had buttons a lot for scrapbooking, but I got rid of a lot of them, but I still have an entire drawer full. Oh, good. Oh, October afternoon buttons. Linda, I loved those. I have some of those left too. Oh, Marsha has a lot of buttons. I love that people have a lot of buttons. Um, Kim's design, she used to crochet and knit and collected a lot of buttons and she thought she was going to give them away and then started card making, but, but her hubby wouldn't let her get rid of them. That is awesome. Usually it's the other way around. I'm so glad you have them too. Oh, antique buttons. I love antique buttons. Oh my gosh, you guys have so many good comments tonight. Hello, everybody who's just joining us. All right, we have basically the front part. Let's go ahead and stitch on the cuff on the back. Maybe I ought to see what time it is. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just go ahead and stitch this. I may not stitch everything on the back just to save a little time. We might use my cheater back that I've already stitched. All right, so there are a few little pieces. You saw me pulling those out of this die. It's kind of delicate, right? But once you have it on here, I have only a small thin line of stitching, which isn't even all that neat, but I kind of like it like that. I kind of like it a little messy. Um, and that's all that's holding it on. It's otherwise loose, but it, it's felt. It's gonna stick there. I kind of like it having a little bit of movement. We're gonna just lay that big piece out first. I am going to move my white needle. I threaded several needles to save time. I usually don't. I usually use one and just switch. But for tonight, we're going to go ahead and use several. Hopefully I won't have to re-thread too much. Oh, Tina says she's used alcohol markers to color buttons when she needs a color to match. That is so smart. I love that idea. I'm gonna give that a try. Dawn wants to know if I will please list the name of the needles in the supply list. I sure will. Um, 
I will list them. I actually get them from my favorite online quilt shop that also sells cross-stitch stuff. So I will definitely add those in. In fact, you guys know me. I keep my little uh, notepad here because I don't think I added those to the list. I might have, but I can't remember. Um, but I will definitely check and make sure those are in the description as soon as the video is done. So I guess I should talk about what I'm doing. I just lay it out. I'm not even, I don't pin it or anything. And I'm just stitching a little line down this center. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just really trying to get my needle. And this is why these little needles are so awesome is because they go through a delicate piece like this really well. And one of the reasons we don't have to stitch all of this on, uh, like all the little branches or le whatever, the leaves, is because we're going to be putting a pretty big poinsettia over this, which will else also help hold it down. Cindy Gro wants to know if I quilt too, and yes, I do. Um, I love, love, love. Um... Kim's design, she has fabric glue. Can that be used on felt? I have not personally tried it. I have used hot glue in a pinch when I need to. I actually don't, I try not to. I like just stitching better. It's less messy and that goes for liquid as well. But if you have a fabric glue and it says that it will work for felt, I would say try it. Um, I would probably not try it on like the project project, I'd probably try it on a scrap. And then Susan Mad Sky says, Gail, what kind of glue would you use? And she doesn't have luck with glue and felt. I don't either. I um, make a mess. So, and I burn my fingers and with, I already have one finger that has a band-aid. We don't need more. Hello. Aileen's glue pin has been recommended by Tracy Boyd. That's awesome. Fabrifix. Gail says, okay, good to know. Okay, um, Linda wants to know where I get time to do all of these things. This is my full-time job. Um, so while, yes, I mean, I do make a lot of projects. This is my full-time job, so that, that does help. But I also, like these projects, my samples that you'll see, I sit and, I, and I've done in the evening over the weekend. Um, while I watch TV. I don't really know why I tied this off. I probably didn't have to, but that's okay. Let's just re-knot it. I just go underneath on the back and then kind of knot it that way. I'll show it a better the next one. I'm talking and not paying attention and I should probably be showing that. So we're going to overlap. I know this looks kind of ugly, but our flower is going to cover it up. I'm actually going to start here and that's so I don't have to knot my thread off before adding my last little branch. Lisa says she just joined a quilting group to do her first ever quilt. Oh, yay! I'm so excited. Are you doing like a quilt along or um, tell me all the things. I love quilt alongs. I just started doing them. I thought I wouldn't like them, but I'm actually, the pace is good because I don't feel like I have to do it all at once. I'm really I just shared yesterday on my Instagram stories some flower blocks that I was doing. Beth wants to know if I will be making cards with any of the new Christmas spellbinders. Um, I think so. I am waiting. I need to, I need to talk to Yana. So uh, let me get back to you <laughs> on that. In fact, that's a really good reminder that I need to email her or email her back. Linda says she'd love to learn to quilt. Tina has another good idea, a couple's first Christmas. That is also a fantastic idea. Ooh, there is an Aileen's glue, especially for foam and felt. That is so good to know. Thank you. And I am completely a self taught quilter. However, my grandmother, my mom's mom, taught me to sew. I mean, she didn't quilt, but she um, she sewed garments and was an amazing seamstress. 
So I say that I'm self-taught, but I do have a little bit of knowledge just of sewing from her. <laughs> Michelle, that's funny. Let's see. Yeah, Michelle, don't be intimidated by this because I promise, I hope you can see, my stitches are not even all that super straight or anything. It's literally just kind of doing a, it's called a running stitch. They're not, it's not like a, a super tight stitch or anything like that. Let's put our third one on and then start sewing on our flower. Oh, and maybe, maybe we shouldn't go from the back to the front. See, I knew I would do that. And now I have to rethread it. Awesome! Oh, the mitten die, Kathy, is memory box. And in the supply list, in this video, I have links to it. Hopefully one of those will work for you. And it does have all the little holes in it. Memory box also has like a stocking that's really cute. I don't have the stocking. I just have the mitten. And I used to have a lot more... Um, plush dies, but I don't know if they're making them as much now. I love them. You're welcome, Kathy. Linda says her grandmother made beautiful quilts. Yeah. It's funny. My mom's, my mom doesn't really quilt or sew much anymore. She used to sew some. She doesn't really sew, I don't think, much anymore. She cross stitches some. Um, but my aunt, my mom's sister, she actually quilts too, which is so funny. And we don't even do it together or anything like that, we probably should. Uh, but yeah, I always think it's kind of funny that we do that. She was a school teacher and she actually just started quilting when she retired, so. Really fun. I love it, I love fabric. So the buttons, fabric, embroidery floss, felt, this is all my jam, I do love it. I think it's the texture. I think my chat's behind. Ugh. Oh, full-time job is quilting and paper crafting is your other passion. You're just the opposite of me. I love that. Okay, so I want to know all of the things since you are a full-time quilter. That is awesome. Do you do patterns or do you do like pattern testing for people? I'm going to be totally nosy because I love that. Tina says Memory Box has a beautiful stitch snowflake as well. Oh, that's good to know. Uh, Kim's Design says she has some of the Waffle Flower Craft stitching dies. Yeah, I don't have any of those. I should get some. Let's start on our flower just because I'm afraid time will get away. I'm going to see... <laughs> Linda, yes, I am stitching back to front. That does not work. Oh my gosh. Gail says she made 28 quilts one summer for Christmas gifts and it took all summer and fall and she finished Christmas Eve. Girl, I am impressed. That is amazing. Beth wants to know if anyone has the Spellbinders May card kit beach days that they want to sell. So definitely let her know if you have that. Yes. Oh, hello from Sydney, Australia. Belinda, hello. I love, love, love that you could join. This is why I wanted to do an evening live because I know that I've got um, some of you from like Australia who this is a much better time for you. Okay, um, I'm going to show you this die again because part of the reason I think this makes it a little easy, it's still easy to stitch through, but see those little lines? They do kind of die cut into the felt, which does make it a little bit, I think, easier to follow. And in my sample, I'm just going to do the same little running stitch for that. Now I'm only going to lay one of my layers down first but we are gonna come and add another one. And I'm going to start out here at the tip of my petal because I don't wanna to have to, um, I don't wanna to have too much space here on the back. And I don't wanna like, like knot it off and start over a bunch of times. 
I did do that on the sample and it took forever, so I was trying to find ways to save time tonight. Oh, Cheryl used to cross stitch a bunch. Ceramics, yes. I don't, Janelle wants to know if scrapbooking is still a thing. I don't scrapbook anymore. Um, and anything I do, my kids have all preferred not to be public, be put out in public as far as that goes. And so I'm just respecting their wishes that way. But I really don't scrapbook that much. Kind of sad about it sometimes, but is what it is. I fill my time with all of these other crafts, I guess. Oh, PTI has a nice variety of plush dies. I need to check those out. Oh, you're a long arm quilter. That's awesome. Do you do it for others? Okay, my thread's a little wonky. Let me fix it. I think. I got it snagged a little bit there. Oh, there. All right. Of course, doing a live and I make a mess of my thread. I knew I would. Okay. Let's finish stitching. Let's see. Lisa Gordon still scrapbooks. That's awesome. Ding Fryzer Dunn says she, trust me, you don't want anything she has sewn. That's so funny. Oh, Michelle, that's awesome. She makes mini albums and for people, sells them. That is really cool. Gail wants to know if anyone does Stampin' Up, so if you do, let her know in the comments, please. And yes, Mad Sky, Susan is an amazing scrapbooker. I've got to see some of her work in person. I have to say, I used to get, okay, I know this button is actually is probably from Stampin' Up. I think these both might be from Stampin' Up. I loved Stampin' Up buttons too. And because I was using these, I actually went on this Stampin' Up web website today just to see, I was like, ooh, maybe they still have buttons. Maybe they have some new ones that I need to know about. I don't think they have any anymore. I was kind of sad. Hi, Liz. Oh yeah, Susan, you it's so hard packing up our craft rooms to move. I think anyone who is a crafter can feel your pain. It is it is painful. So I'm going to go ahead and lay my second big flower piece on and we are going to just stitch this right in place too. I know I haven't completely finished the first one yet, but I find <laughs> found, I can't talk, found that um, this worked better just because the petals are a little closer together. These needles are so nice and small that they just cut through the felt like butter. I hope that that is showing on camera. I think the needles make all the difference. I used to use some really big needles. I don't even know where they came from. I feel like they were like and this is a blast from the scrapbooking past, making memories. I think they were making memories needles because they were huge and they were easy to thread, but they did not pierce um, felt very well. They'd go through the big like stitching holes, but if you want to stitch anything like this on, I would really recommend a smaller needle just because it glides through a lot easier. Something really sharp. Linda said she just redid her studio and it was quite a challenge. I'm still in the midst of it. I did do quite a bit of work yesterday. 
I still need to get to Ikea and get the last piece of furniture so I can photograph and um, photograph and get my video up. And I did not uh, get that done yet. My nearest Ikea is about two and a half hours away. So it's not like, if I could just run to it like 30 or 40 minutes, I pro or even an hour, I probably would have already done it. And if I could go by myself, I would have already done it. But the box I need is huge and I need my son's truck. And he doesn't really want to on the weekends um, go to Ikea. He wants to do other things because he's 22. And so um, we're just trying to find a weekend. I'm going to try to convince him to go this weekend. We'll see how that goes. I keep reminding him and he's like, yeah, I know you need to go. And I'm Maybe I'll bribe him because I think he needs something. Maybe I'll buy him something for his apartment. <laughs> yeah, a needle threader, Michelle, probably would be handy. I'm going to need one one of these days. And I was afraid like my hands would shake on camera or something. And I'd have a hard time threading it. But I did manage. All right. We're going to put on our medium-sized flower next. And guys, in the comments, if I tend, if I like get too close to myself and go out of frame sewing, please let me know. Oh, Crafting with Tracy Hugs is a current Stampin' Up! demo and loves to quilt. That is good to know. So... What's the deal? Did they get rid of buttons? Because I loved the Stampin' Up! buttons. There were several things. I love their ribbon and I love their buttons. Those are two things that I would buy a lot of. And I still have a ton of. Hello, everyone. Oh, I am way behind in the chat. I'm so sorry, you guys. Hopefully there's nobody who said anything. Oh gosh, I was really, really far behind. And I think I missed some stuff too. Oh my gosh, my stomach is growling too. That's always fun. I was trying to get all this set up, so we're going to, I'm going to have supper late tonight. How about everybody else? Have you, if you're in the same time or close to the same time zone, have you eaten already or? eating when this is done. I am going to go ahead and put the small one on just so we can stitch these like kind of next to each other to finish that off. Oh, basic gray buttons. Yeah, those were pretty too. I may still have a few of those in my stash as well. I mixed them up and now they're sorted by color. So I don't always know exactly where they're from. I know I have, okay, my mind's eye used to do these little button cards, which I thought were so cute. I mean, the packaging was part of what sold it, I'm sure. But they had like wood, but like, I think they were kind of wooden ones. They had other buttons on the cards too, but the wooden ones were my favorite. Okay, Tina lost something and I missed it. I'm going to have to go back and read. And Lori's eating popcorn, which honestly, with my stomach growling, sounds fantastic. That might be what my supper is tonight. My youngest son, I think, had cereal. I said, I'm getting ready for this. And he was, do you want me to warm you up anything? He's like, nah, I'm going to have cereal. Or he had some earlier. He might be hungry after this. Ooh, chicken tacos, Tina. I wish I was at your house for supper. That would have been awesome. I love chicken tacos. Although I love all tacos. I don't discriminate with tacos. Oh, you're doing your daughter's hair. How fun. I miss those days sometimes. All right, we almost have our flowers stitched on, yay. 
I am going to tie this off here on the back. And snip that off. All right. So there's kind of how our front's looking. And then I didn't use the die that goes in the middle. I used a button just because it added a little bit more texture, which I thought was kind of fun. So I'm going to grab my white needle. I better put my, ouch. And I did poke myself with that red one. And I think I knotted it already. I did. And then we're just going to come up kind of through the center and you can see my needle went right through. Easy peasy. And I'm going to sew on my little button here. And I usually go through it a couple times at least, two to three times. And you wouldn't really probably have to. I just like a little bit thicker thread right there in the center. Thank you, Anya. And this is going to be it for the front of our mitten. Now, if you want to add anything else, so maybe you don't want to do buttons. Maybe you want to do like sequins. You could always add sequins with seed beads in the center or even scattered around if you wanted to. I kept mine pretty simple. There are so many things you can do. I have another idea that I thought would be cute. Oh, let me tie this off and I'll show you too. So when we did the cuff, I thought it would be cute even to maybe do a sequin every other or something along here with a little be seed bead in the center. I thought that would be kind of sweet as well. All right, I'm gonna set my white thread aside for a second. I am, I'm not gonna sew this other cuff on, I don't think, cause I'll just kind of, we're gonna skip to this, but I am gonna sew on this stuff just so you can kind of see it. It's really the same as this, but I wanna sew those numbers on. So let's pull out, there's a few little pieces again in this bigger branch. And they die cut, they just don't, they kind of stick. So I wanna pull those out, there we go. I'm gonna kind of just lay that, this is the back. So we're gonna just lay that kind of right there and then we're going to sew that on. I'm gonna grab my green thread again. Okay. These needles, you know what? I have beading needles. I was going to try this, Cindy. Cindy wants to know if the needle will go through a sequin hole. It'll go through a sequin. I don't know if it'll go through a seed bead. Hold on, I'll just check on camera. How about that? Because I know these are obviously not the right color, but I am curious because I do have beading needles somewhere else. A beading needle will always work, but so here is a seed bead. I don't know if you can, you can see that. And yes, it's going to go, it went completely over the eye. So these needles are small enough and you can use them for beading. Yay! Thank you for asking that because earlier I was thinking I might do some sequins and then I opted not to, but that's good for future reference. We're going to stitch this on real quick and then I'm going to stitch on our numbers and then we're going to put our ornament together. Oh, darn it. Kind of caught the end of that there. There we go. Oh, my dog is not happy. I locked him out. Hello, everyone. Um, not afraid of color wants to know if these are Tim Holtz dies. Actually, nothing I'm using today is Tim, but he probably has some dies that are similar that would work amazing. I just did not, I don't either have them or I didn't check. I try to use what I have with these kind of projects. Like I'll buy stuff for another project and then try to see if it will work for this. Lawn Fawn has a bunch, 
not just Lawn Fawn, but I'm thinking of those because I have a lot and I actually have another felt project I am going to do a video for. Their stitching dies work great because you can kind of follow the stitching lines, which you're going to see when I add the numbers. You definitely wouldn't have to add this on the back if you didn't want to. I just had these left over and instead of, you know, just having leftover pieces, I thought a little bit of greenery on the back might be kind of cute. I'm definitely not going to decorate the back up like I did the front because it more than likely won't be seen very much. But I do like having the back look pretty. And I just kind of catch the felt a little bit and go around, create a little loop, and knot it off. Normally, this is not how I do a lot of, I mean, if, if I need the back to look pretty, I won't do it this way, but for this, no one's ever going to see. We are going to switch back to white, and dang it, my chat stopped again. Oh, Anya, you're going to get sushi. I love sushi too. I'm so jealous. Yeah, I need to get my studio video up. Let me see. Hello, hello. Linda wants to know, would regular felt work too? Um, what do you mean by regular felt? Like the polyester blend? I feel like it tears really bad, so I wouldn't use it. When looking for felt, I would look for something that is 100% wool. It's just a lot stronger and it doesn't pull. You'll notice, a, so I stuff these with a little polyester fiber fill and the polyester blend will tear. Oops. I am going to start with the number two, mostly because I just found that, let's lay this here so you can see, um, that just kind of covers up the stem of my branch. And I decided to use a contrasting color of thread, so we're going to use the white. It is still threaded with three strands. That's okay. I'm just going to leave it. Now, the Oliver's stitched one, two, threes from Lawn Fawn. See how it has that little stitching? This actually make because it die cuts that stitching in the felt, it makes it easier to stitch. And I just go around the center. You could also stitch around the edges if you wanted to, if you wanted to be super fancy. Um, I'll show you a couple other ideas here when I show you my other ornaments. Um, I didn't do fancy. I did really, really simple here. I know everyone is waiting for my studio video. I need to call my son when we're done and say we have to go to Ikea this weekend because everyone wants me to get that video up. I wonder if that will work. Probably. He's a good boy. <laughs> Let's see. So I'm just going to stitch these on. I'm probably only going to do this one and then I'm going to put my ornament together because I see we're closing in on an hour and I don't want to keep you guys here too terrible long and it will take me a minute to stitch around the whole thing. So that's kind of how the back is going to look. We will also off camera later I'll stitch on the other two numbers, kind of like that. So I'm going to just set that aside. And we're going to take this one that I did earlier and pretend I did this one right now. That is why I did that one off camera, because I was afraid. Stitching does take a minute. So I'm just going to snip that off for now. And we're going to set that to the side. Linda says, if he doesn't, you'll come and take me to Ikea. That's awesome. You know what? I tried. Okay, let me see. Linda says, ordered online. Yeah, I tried. Uh, they won't deliver what I want. They delivered a bunch of other stuff, and they won't deliver the thing I want, and they charge $199, and I'm not paying that for a $49 thing. Um, I considered it, honestly, <laughs> just because it's such a pain, but... Uh, they wouldn't even deliver it. Dang it. I was so annoyed. 
Yeah, road trip, Tina. That would be awesome. Okay, so we have our front and our back. I'm going to lay our front and our back with the back sides together, just lining them up. I always kind of just do a little visual test. And I have this length of red and white gingham ribbon. I'm just, I gotta open the door, hold on, and let my dog in because he's gonna cry. Come on. He doesn't like to be left. All right, sorry, I'm back. And we are gonna fold it in half kind of like this. This is just how I did it for this one. And all I do is I'm gonna catch these ends and I put quite a bit down here so that it's pretty secure. We're gonna catch these when we stitch across the top and I do start up there just so that I can catch those. I'm gonna go ahead too and grab a longer length of white. I'm probably am still gonna to have to add more but we'll see if this will get all the way around. Yeah, the delivery fee was crazy. I was like, really? $199 for a $49 shelf unit? But that's okay. Maybe I can convince him to get up early and go Saturday. I'll tell him that everybody here wants him to get up and come with me. Michelle says, just like cooking shows, a finished one ready to go. Well, I wish. I just was hoping it would save a tiny bit of time tonight. Okay, we're going to start on the inside. And I'm just going to find one set of holes. And we the top is, the top where the cuff is, is the I don't want to say the worst part, but you're going through four layers basically. But I want to hide my knot inside, so I always just start inside and I'm going to thread that through. So see there's my knot and then I just kind of tuck it down. And then what I like to do is we'll go up and down each and every hole. Odin, please stop crying. So this is always just the tricky part is catching my ribbon ends. I try to make sure the needle's going through them so it secures them. They will be super secure when we come back. So you'll notice I'm going up and down, which leaves an empty space, which I don't think looks very nice. And you'll notice in the finished one, so we go all the way around once, and then we're going to go all the way around again. Tina says, tell him Denny's has a Grand Slam breakfast if he takes you. Yeah, that's always the thing. I'm like, well, I'll take you out to eat. And he thinks that is great. <laughs> Gail, are you asking, is it an Ikea in New York? I live in Kansas, so it's an Ikea in Kansas. And I'm like, I don't know, $199 delivery fee seemed a little steep. So I'm just kind of going up and down all the way around. I wish that there was a speedier way to do this, but there's not. And it's always kind of tricky. Okay, so some of those little holes don't always pop out. They're die cut, but they come out more later. I have them all over right now. I need to vacuum. And I do a lot of flipping trying to make sure that I am going up and down the holes. And I'm gonna show you here in a minute when I show you, you can do a back stitch, definitely. I tend to go all the way around. I think it saves a little bit of thread, I don't know. It just works out really well. I feel like someone told me this a few years ago because I, I did start out doing the back stitch. But this works too. You can do whatever, stitching you feel comfortable doing. Let's see. 
Yeah, Rebecca, that is expensive shipping. Laura says that Ikea wouldn't ship her pegboard, so she ordered it from someone on eBay. <laughs> they charged $8 million for shipping. Oh my gosh. Well, so this is funny. My friends thought this was hilarious. I, am, I was telling my friends Karen and Lori last month we got together that I had just been to Ikea for the first time and they both looked at me like I was crazy. I had never been. Um, and I never bought anything from them because where I used to live was even further away from an Ikea. And so I just really had never been. I mean, I know I've been near them. I just have never gone. And so, yeah, it was, it was life altering. I didn't know what to expect and crazy. Oh, Gail wants to know if New York has an Ikea. Linda says hers is reasonable. I mean, the prices are super reasonable there, but the shipping is crazy. But it might be because I don't live close. Cheryl said this is her first live. Oh, thank you. Hello and welcome. So stitching around this, because I put my string or my ribbon in, does it, you kind of have to try to avoid it. I'm also not going to stitch over this. I'm going to kind of lift up the little branches. I don't really want to tuck those down. Yeah, there's just not the the IKEAs are not close to me. And I know that when we went, I we had planned to go. The thing I wanted, I checked, it was in stock because I didn't want to drive two and a half hours and find out it wasn't in stock. I'd kind of heard some horror stories about that. And then I checked the night before we were leaving. What I wanted was out of stock. So I told my son, we're not going. And he was like, okay, so we plan on not going. I sign up to be notified when it's back in stock. And lo and behold, the next morning, the day we were going to go, I get the notification and I called him and I said, do you want to go? And he was like, oh, yeah. So we went, but couldn't believe it. But it's good that things are starting to be back in stock. First live two and has a question. Do you have tips on cutting felt? Okay, my best tips on cutting felt. Um, the tighter your machine is, I think the better it cuts. I will tell you, um, sometimes you have to roll it through more than once. Oh gosh, did I just really do that? No, okay. Um, so go through more than once, like back and forth a couple times if you need to. Add a shim, like a piece of co coffee paper, co coffee, copy paper. Um, that will also kind of help make it a little thicker when it's going through the rollers and maybe give you a better cut. Um, I'm going to be honest here. I used to have a big shot. It did not cut felt that great. Um, I did use like a metal shim in that to help get a cut because most of my old videos with felt, that is what I used. So it does work, but I have the Spellbinders Platinum and I have had it for quite a few years now, like the last probably four years, maybe three to four years, maybe longer. And it works so much better. So I don't know if it's the machine. I know some people have better luck. But that is my best tip. I also think that these, like the Tailored Expressions felt cuts really well. The Ellen Hudson cuts well. Let me see. Yes, Tina Pierce at uh, Tenny says she hates going to Ikea on the weekend. So do we. That's why we wanted to get up really early and be there right when they opened. But we didn't get there when they opened. And oh my word, they were slammed. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I tried to get him to, I said, maybe the next time you take a day off during the week, we should go, but he works all week, so we'll see. I use the Spellbinders Platinum, Kathy. I don't know if I will 
stitch all the way around this. I'm going to go all the way up here just to kind of save time. I want to show you guys the other ornaments and I will kind of start to show it, but I'm not going to finish. We are going to stuff it real quick. So you can see I'm close to where I started. I've left just about this much space. I don't need a ton. Then I just take some polyester fiber fill and I tear it into little pieces and we're going to stuff it down inside of our ornament. We don't want to overstuff, but I just kind of use, well, you'll see. I don't have an exact amount. I just kind of stuff it until I feel like it's like pillowy, little puffy. And I'm just going to continue to do that. I just kind of take my finger and gently move it in there. And I think the smaller the pieces you use, the better. I mean, you don't want to use a super tiny piece, but I, I don't use a big piece either. And we're just going to tuck all of that in. And kind of up here in the top corner. And then down in the thumb of the mitten. We're going to put a little bit there. Kind of make sure there's some in the center. And this is literally the a cheap bag of polyester fiber fill I got at Walmart. I don't even know how long ago, you guys. So, so long ago. Yep, Julie says use good quality felt. Definitely use good quality felt. So that's probably about good enough. I don't want it so full that it's going to pull my stitches. So I just like it a little full. You also wouldn't have to stuff it if you don't want to. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. That's really nice. Oh, Linda has a great tip. If you have a cuddle bug, turn your die so it's facing up instead of down and it will cut almost anything. That is so good to know. Because I have had a lot of comments from people who say they still have a cuddle bug, which is really fun. Linda wants to know what time on Friday is my next live. That will be 9 a.m. Central on Friday. Once I have it stuffed, I'm going to just close up this last little corner and then I'm going to show you just the start of how I finish stitching it. You could do a blanket stitch. If you are good at stitching there are a lot of different things you can do. You do not have to do like a back stitch or this running stitch that I'm doing. You could do you know all kinds of fancy stuff. I tried once and I'm not so good with it. I really wanted to do a blanket stitch, but it did not look great. So we are up at the top. We've closed it. And when we start going back, it's just going to close up all of those open spots. So I'm actually going to set this one aside. And I'm going to show you a few other projects. We'll just stick our needle in that. But there's kind of how it's going to... It'll end up looking like this one, like that. Let me see. If we have, hi, Nicole. Hello, Mindy, how are you? Let's see. Rustic tree ornaments with felt. Oh, yes. Cuddle bug lasted forever. I used to have a cuddle bug too, and it did. It lasted a long time, but I overworked it. Let me see if I have any other questions. Okay, I'm going to show you some other examples. So I know I was telling you guys at the beginning of the live that I was having so much fun. So, first up, oh, there went a die. That's okay. First, I did another colorway. I did a rustic one. So for the rustic lovers out there, I did a khaki mitten with a white poinsettia. Um, I kept the same mossy green greenery for this. The design is completely the same. I just used a different base color and a different flower cut color. And I did use like this green 
this is stampin up i don't know i loved it i thought it was cute and then the back i just did a little white uh 2021 or the 21 there um so that was just a another colorway you can do this in any colorway that matches your decor which i think is so much fun i do kind of traditional so i tend to go like reds and and grays and whites then i love the lawn fawn stitch snowflakes so I made a little snowflake mitten too. These are amazing. They stitch up great. I've used them before. Um, red cuff, very similar in design. You can see I used the buttons the same. I put a button in the center and I just stitched these on. Now I think these snowflakes look really cute with sequins and seed beads, like kind of at the points and stuff. I didn't do that today, but it would be a really cute idea as well. Um, I did a little snowflake on the back with my 2021 as well. Oh my gosh, I'm laughing. Not afraid of color says my address is dot, dot, dot. That's so funny. <laughs> so that is the snowflake. Imagine maybe you have like an aqua, aqua and pink, I think would be so cute. I almost did an aqua and pink, but I didn't. That's because, and now I didn't finish this last one. Um, but it's completely non-traditional, but if you have, like, if you put a Christmassy tree, oh, I'm lagging again. Maybe, I hope I'm not lagging on you guys' end. Um, if you do like a Christmas tree in your craft room or you have a rainbow tree, I did this little rainbow mitten. I kind of love it. Um, I don't know if you guys do or not, but I thought it was so much fun. So these dies are all lawn fun. I'm going to show you what I used. I'm using the stitched rainbow and I love this rainbow because each of the arcs is its own die so you're not wasting a ton. I used the rainbow and I used the clouds. I used the sun from spring showers which I've had forever and then I used some little hearts and because I didn't want to do um the like anything on the back really this is was a little bit more stitching i changed the color for each of the rainbow rays so i did the whole 2021 on the back and just added a little heart there so that was and i haven't finished stitching it i was madly stitching while the countdown timer was going on and i didn't finish so i will finish this and this a little bit later but those are kind of, here, I'll do the four that I did today. So these are the little ornaments that I made. I hope you guys love it. I know it wasn't card making today, but something a little different. I'm going to switch my camera. So possibilities are endless. Um, what die is the mitten Deb says? I'm going to switch back and I'll show you. This is the Memory Box Plush Frosty Mitten. I have a link for it in the supplies down below. I already have um, those listed there. So if you're looking for it, let me know. Uh, Brenda says the rainbow mitten her granddaughter would love too. Yes. Gail, I don't know if I have room for a tree in here or not. I may just kind of hang like a little garland or something. I don't know and hang it from there, but I thought it would be fun. I know I have some friends who would love some little rainbow um, ornaments, probably. Let me see. I'm going to go back and make sure I'm not... If I've missed your question, let me know again. Um, I am not sure. It's K-R-R-O-B-U. She says, I... Or, I wait for your felt projects every year because they're so beautiful. Thank you. Um, my handmade holiday series. So I've kind of not done a great job the last couple of years. This year, I'm doing it in October. So it'll be a lot earlier. I'm going to wait till Stamp Timber is over. And then October, we are going to do Handmade Holiday. So look for a lot of projects then, a lot of videos. And um, we'll try to do some lives with Handmade Holiday as well. Oh, Linda, that's so nice. She says you could boil water and we would love it. That's so nice. So that was... Um, real-time stitching. I know that um, a lot of you have requested that because when I do the stitching in the videos, I speed it up because it's just so long. 
Gail has a great suggestion, unicorn mittens. That would be darling. Um, Terry Gust wants to know, do you use a real thin felt? I'm gonna show you a roll. Let me see. So this is the, let me switch. This is the how the tailored expressions felt comes. And this is about how thick it is. I am not sure what the thickness is. It is 100% wool felt and I love it. It is really great quality. See when I pull it, if you buy the cheap stuff, it tears. I am really tugging and it's not tearing. The tailored expressions is probably my favorite. Plus they, it comes rolled up like this. So it looks for like, it looks cute. I love it. What is the color of that mitten again? Okay, the mittens, this is Heather White. This mitten is charcoal. And I don't know where my roll of that went, but this color is called charcoal. So Heather White and charcoal is that. This is Tiffany and this one is khaki. And I will have all of that listed on my blog post that goes out tomorrow morning. Hello, Shelly. Thank you, Christopher. Oh, Joyous and Christ says she's looking forward to that series. I'm looking forward to it this year. I'm really excited. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm glad you liked the live presentation. Yay. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Not afraid of color. It is pretty thick. I just, it's not super thick. I think it works really well. I love it. And it, it's a good weight and it doesn't tear, but it does die cut. Oh, Linda says she's off Friday. Yay. Let me switch my camera. Oh, good. Kim Lee says she got to catch a live. Thank you. Um, Gail, you can buy the felt at Tailored Expressions. I have links to it down in the supplies. And I will um, be listing here after the live is done. I'm going to list um the colors i don't think i listed them out they just go to the general but i'll list them in the description tonight so if you want to get them you can don't buy it all i need to go make an order <laughs> i need to replace some of my colors um yes barb hello rainbow is your fave thank you um gail wants to know if you can buy the felt anywhere um, the Tailored Expressions felt is only from Tailored Expressions, um, and there are lots of sources. I don't know all the sources. I would just look for 100% wool felt. Yay. Christine Bishop, I, the top of, or the mittens, Heather White, Khaki, Tiffany, and Charcoal. And I will add that information just as soon as we are finished. Thank you, guys. Um, Joyce and Christ asks if I use special thread to sew these. I did not. I used DMC embroidery floss. So readily available at Walmart or Hobby Lobby or your favorite crafting store. Oh, thank you so much, Julie. Okay, let me see. I'm not afraid of color. You're right. I'm probably going to eat first, and then I'm going to add that to the description. <laughs> you are correct. Friday's live will be at 9 a.m. Central. Oh, good. Thank you guys so much. Well, I don't think I see any more questions, so I am probably going to sign off and let you guys go for this evening. But thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't subscribed, please be sure to subscribe, um, hit the thumbs up, all that good stuff. I so appreciate it. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else I had wanted to tell you guys. Oh, um, Simon Says Stamp has some new rainbow blending brushes. They're pretty awesome. I have a link to those in the description. So very fun as well. Oh, Christine does have a, a question before I go. The color of the cuff of the mittens. Marshmallow is the white color I use. And if the red one is 
Red Hot. Yes, Red Hot. I made myself a note. So Marshmallow and Red Hot. Thank you guys so much. Linda says she hopes the stamp market comes out with felt. Um, me too. <laughs> me too. Okay, I think I am going to sign off for now. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you on Friday or the next evening live. Bye. The supplies used in today's video are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another project that you might be interested in. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to never miss a new live video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.